Are you looking for a pruning saw that fits your budget? You may want to check out this Craftsman. This is the Craftsman 6 inch pruning saw, runs on their 20 volt battery and it has a three year warranty. Now we're gonna put this to the test, see what we think about it, but first let's go over the features and then after we use it, we'll come back and talk about pricing and about a three year warranty and what we thought of it. We've got the Craftsman model number CMCCS320D1. So this is the kit, comes with the two amp hour battery, uh, the six inch pruning saw, and uh, this charger here is kind of a unique charger. I haven't seen from Craftsman yet, but uh, nice and compact. Meant for charging like overnight. It's not gonna be a quick charger. Uh, they have faster chargers, but still a nice little charger for the kit. Uh, even has a, an indicator light on here that lets you know the status of the battery while it's charging. They're calling this the V26 inch cordless pruning chainsaw. Now, as I mentioned, the battery charger, but it also comes with this two amp hour V20 battery as well. So they're 20 volt max battery, uh, two amp hour, so slim pack battery. They are claiming that it still gets 85 cuts. I believe that's in like two inch dowels. So we'll test this on some a little bit heavier uh, branches. With the six inch bar and chain, uh, they're claiming a four inch max capacity for cutting. For a pruning saw, that is absolutely fine. That's not a problem. We're not taking trees down with this. We're pruning bushes, trees, hedges, things like that. So hitting those one inch, two inch, uh, three and four inch limbs and, and branches to clear those. We do not have a chain break per se. So this is just basically a hand guard to guard that secondary hand that's up here. The only lockout is right here. So we have to push that over before we pull the trigger to actually activate the chainsaw. There is no on off switch. That's it right there. Make it easy, push the button over, pull the trigger. And you have to do that every time once you release the trigger that locks out once again. But again, this is not a chain break of any sort, just a flexible uh, guard for that second hand. Something I did notice in kind of inspecting this saw and looking in here, it looks like we have a typical brushed motor in here. Again, that's not a problem on a tool like this. Brushed motor is gonna provide plenty of torque to get the job done. Is it less efficient than brushless? Yes, a little bit, but again, it's gonna keep the cost of the tool down. And if it still accomplishes the work that needs to be done for what the saw is intended for, not a problem with that. So again, brushed can motor, uh, and then something else interesting here. And remember, I have the battery out of here, so uh, no risk of uh, getting cut other than just hanging my finger maybe on one of the, the blades. But anyway, uh, an interesting guard cover here uh, or, or bar and chain cover. So rather than a slide on, slide off, uh, it's just hinged right here, opens up, and now we can see the blade. We also have a, uh, a tip guard so that's going to help in not kicking something back as well as just, you know, a, a good guard for you not getting into trouble. Um, but mainly for kind of an anti kickback, that's where that kickback occurs is on the tip of a chainsaw. You get into it and it wants to kick the saw up. A single bar nut there, pretty typical on a shorter saw like this that you'll only have one, one stud and nut. I do like seeing that it's an actual stud and nut. I really don't like those hand tightening things. Uh, but where is uh, the scrunch is what we usually call it, but it's actually a little different on this one. It's in the blade guard, which is kind of cool that they provided a place for this more of a flat scrunch. They're probably not calling it a scrunch, but basically this is what you'll use to loosen the bar nut as well as tension the chain for you'll use the tip here like a screwdriver. Now, something else I noticed about it, it's kind of a pain to get out of here. Again, we're talking minuscule issues, right? You're, you're only going to need this when you need it, which is not going to be very often on a saw like this. A regular chainsaw, yes, you're always grabbing, uh, you know, your scrunch to loosen, tension the chain, things like that. On a saw like this, I doubt it. I doubt it. You're probably going to tension this once every few times you use it, um, but it's kind of a pain to get out of this case. I haven't figured out a way to get it without either grabbing another tool or really having to manhandle this thing out of here because it clips in so hard. Again, I'm talking, you know, very small issues here, but just sharing with you our thoughts on it as we go through the saw. I, I do like the fact that it's actually hinged here. It's not plastic that's going to break. So you've got a metal pin 
through those plastic hinges so that should last some time and I like the fact that it actually has storage for these things so this is basically going to loosen your bar nut and then this is going to tension the chain now the tensioner is not here on the side like typical chainsaws if you'll look here right on the front of the saw there's your tensioner right there there's a tensioner screw so you'll loosen your bar nut you'll come in here and then you'll tighten or loosen that screw depending on how much tension you want the chain now also different in a typical chainsaw if i were tensioning that blade i would want to see kind of the top of the the guide teeth down there but on one like this you want to basically get it nice and tensioned where there's not much slack at all in there and leave it since there's such a short bar on here uh, you're you're typically not going to sling that off you're also not going to overheat it usually because you're not using it in long sessions now it also does not have an oil tank on it so it's not self oiling it's not uh, you know providing oil on that chain continuously and they call it oilless i actually saw on the uh on one of their advertisements that it's oil free and that is true there's no oil on board the saw but one thing they recommend is you to oil the chain so i think that's a little bit i won't say misleading but it's um it, it's not guiding you in the right direction you do need to oil this chain because they do recommend it in the actual manual so i'll show you how to oil this in just a moment very quick i would say each time you use it to do it um, but it does need oil on it or you're gonna you know, burn that up and it's gonna shorten the life of the chain let's go ahead and open this up i believe that's a typical 13 millimeter kind of too hard to do with your hand so it makes it a little bit of a pain to have to use that scrunch yeah so half inch or 13 millimeter will work and that nut is captured on the guard there or on the cover and keep in mind you've got a little hook there that needs to go right there in that little slot first before you close it up you don't just put this over here so again that nut is captured there in the guard make sure that that stays in there i'd also recommend every few times you use this pull this off clean this out with a with a brush or a blow gun or something to keep all the dust free from there you'll see after we use it here in a few moments that it'll probably get a lot of junk in there so we get a six tooth sprocket and a six inch blade And something else I noticed under the saw here, this little hook right here. And, and I actually, I think this is really cool. If you grab this and pull it out, that's to use with their VersaTrack system. We just did a review of the, their toolbox and their VersaTrack system. And I like the fact when, when tool companies make some storage items or storage accessories, I like that they actually buy into it and, and trust in it because this is a great tool to just be able to dr hang directly on that VersaTrack system, you don't need a separate accessory, a separate hanger, anything like that. You get done with a saw, you pull the hook out, hang it on your VersaTrack system, and you're good to go. And also notice this little kick out right here, which I think is nothing more than kind of a kickstand for it to lay level when you lay it on its side. I can't find any other use for that little shelf that's right there. Other than, like I said, when you lay it over that it kind of lays on that area. Now, I'm not sure of the chain speed. I couldn't find any numbers on the chain speed, but on a saw like this, I don't think it's that important. Doesn't seem crazy fast. At the same time, we're not cutting big stuff, so we're not expecting a whole lot of um, speed performance from a saw like this and probably doesn't even need it. So let's take it out and see what we think. Now the very first thing I want to do is get this chain and bar oiled since we don't have an onboard oiler. So I'm going to take my typical bar and chain lube. And by the way, they say you can use 30 weight motor oil as well. And I'm just going to make a mess. But I'm going to run me a line down each one. You really don't have to put a lot. I totally overdid it. I'm not too concerned about it. But if you are, then take your battery out, wipe that down. But what I want to do is get a good amount on that bar and chain, and now it's going to sling some off, so be careful where you're running this.
So I'm gonna make sure that I've basically run that oil all the way around that bar and around that sprocket and it's good and oiled up. And yes, it's probably gonna make a little bit of a mess, but that's what's gonna happen. Now your one and two inch stuff is probably not gonna be an issue at all. That's probably one and a half, two inches. But then getting into that max capacity, yeah, that's, so that's right at four inches. So about three and a half that way, four inches this way. So we're really at max capacity with this branch and we'll see how well it does. Not bad at all for cutting a four inch limb. Again, we're hitting max capacity of the saw, cutting through it rather steady, not the fastest in the world, but at the same time, this is a homeowner's pruning saw and it's doing quite well. I'm not just letting that cut through, I'm actually applying a little bit of pressure. Impressive results from a brushed pruning saw. No problems at all with the brush motor. In fact, we found more power in it than we thought or that we anticipated we were going to see cutting through that uh, four inch limb or four inch branch. Now with the six inch bar, you're gonna be capped at like that four inch capacity, especially uh, with this tip guard on here. So you're not going to get large branches. You're not gonna be able to cut that. But again, with the size saw this is, you really don't wanna be cutting that. So anything four inch and smaller, this saw is gonna be great for. So, you know, cutting crepe myrtles are big around our area and those things are always a pain. And a lot of times they grow kind of beyond typical lopping shears. Um, so something like this will be really quick to do so. So those branches in that two inch range, this is gonna be perfect for that and very handy. And again, we got quite a few cuts as well with the two amp hour battery that's included. Now, a professional is probably gonna reach for something a little more powerful, maybe with a larger battery. Uh, but for that DIY, for that homeowner, this is gonna be a great saw for that. So check it out, we'll have a link in the description. It's only $129. And again, you get a three year warranty with this as well. And that includes everything, the charger, the battery, and the tool. Uh, so check it out. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, well, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.